day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to carry on going through paper one exam paper questions, um, starting with this one. When I say starting, I mean continuing, as we already had started with it yesterday. And we had gone as far as, where were we? Um, we done the first one and we done the second one. We were about to do this with this. Calculate the values of x if four times f of x plus one is equal to the square root of two. So what I said yesterday was that what they're saying is, and I've written a bit over this, but I need the writing, so I'm going to leave this. It says f of x is equal to a half to the power of x. So wherever we're going to see an x, we're now going to write x plus one. So in other words, our equation now is four multiplied by a half to the power of x plus one is equal to root two. And we're being asked to solve that. Okay, that's what we've been asked. Is this calculate the value or values of x? Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna realize that this is all up to a base two. Okay. Four, I'm gonna write it up here on the left hand side. So four can be written as two squared, okay, multiplied. The two to the half can be written as two to the negative one all to the power of x plus 1 is equal to, and again, the square root of 2 is 2 to the, what is it, 2 to the half. Okay, so now what we can do is we can multiply across this bracket. So we've got 2 squared, and then that becomes 2 to the negative x, okay, minus one, minus x times one, uh, minus one times x is minus x, minus times the plus is a minus one, equals two to the half. And then what do you do? If you've got a common base, what do you do to your exponents? You, or your indices, your exponents, you add them. So we've got two, and this becomes two minus x minus one is equal to two to the half. And then we can drop the bases because they're both the same. And you're left with 2 to the negative x. Sorry, you don't have to write that. Uh, let me just erase this last line. There we go. So now we just have the exponents that we're writing. So it's 2 minus x minus 1 is equal to half. And yes, square 12, so obviously I could have made this nice, nicer right over here already, but I've just taken it slowly. So 2 minus x minus 1 is obviously 1 minus x is equal to a half. Therefore, I can take that across and I get minus x is a half minus 1. Therefore, minus x is equal to minus a half. Therefore, x is just a half. There you go. So the correct answer here is just x equals a half. Right, now they ask us for the range of g. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise all this red writing from today, the calculation we did today, just that there's more space. Um, okay, and what do they ask us? They're asking us for the range of g. So if you have a look at g, how are we going to get that? Um, the range of G, do you agree, is, oh, what is going on in this pen? There we go. The range of G is all the Y values, all the Y values except this line here. And this line here is basically where it does not cross, okay? Which is the value of Q, okay? But now, what else do we know? We also know, it says that the sketch shows the graphs of f of x equals a half x. Okay, um, there we go. But you can see what's interesting is that f of x is a half x goes through this line A at point A. Okay, there at A. And do you see that it says A is an intercept of f, B is a point of intersection. They say A, B is parallel to the x axis. A, B is parallel to X axis. If that's the case, then the Y value of this value has to be the Y value at this point. 
Do you agree? And the y value here is one. This coordinate of this is zero, one, because anything to the zero is one. So therefore the y value at B is also one, and this line is y is equal to one. With it for the range of X of G can be given as y is an element of all the real values for y does not equal one, cannot equal one. Now it says, if h of x is equal to x plus 3, is the equation of one of the axes of symmetry of g determine the coordinates of b? Okay, well, the whole point about the axis of symmetry is that it goes through b, right? And they're saying y is h of x equals x plus 3. So it's obviously doing this. It's a positive graph. It's got a gradient of 1 and it's going through the value 3 and they want this value here. But what's nice is we have the y value there, it's 1. So do you agree we can say, well, 1 is equal to x plus 3, therefore x is going to equal minus 2, therefore the coordinates of b are minus 2, 1. Okay, so that point there is minus 2, okay, minus 2, 1. Okay, then it says, hence determine the equation of G. Okay, well, that's fairly easy because we have got G of X is equal to A over X plus P plus Q. But we know that Q is how much we've moved it up by, which is one. So it's A, X, we'll worry about P in a minute, plus one. Now, the P is always an opposite sign to whatever this is. So if this is minus 2, it means it's plus 2, okay? Because it's what we have to do to get rid of this. So therefore, if this is plus 2, it means that the asymptote was at minus 2. Okay, and now all we have to do is work out what A is. Okay, but we have a point that this graph goes through. It goes through 0, 0. Do you agree? It goes through 0, 0. So we've got y is equal to a, x plus 2, plus 1. But we know that it goes through the point 0, 0. So we can go 0 is equal to a over 2 plus 1. Therefore, we can go minus 1 is equal to a over 2. Therefore, we can say a is equal to negative 2. Therefore, do you agree that g of x, the equation for g of x is a is minus 2 over x plus 2 plus 1? And there you go. Finally, it says, for which values of x is g dashed of x greater than 0? Now, g dashed of x is its slope. So it's saying for which value of, is, of x will the gradient of g dashed of x be greater than zero? In other words, when will there be a positive gradient? Positive gradient. So it's only a positive gradient, yeah. Okay. How do I say that? Why do I say that? Because, and, hang on a moment, and it's a positive gradient gradient here. If it's going up to the right, then it is a positive gradient. So basically it's for all values of x, for x does not equal minus 2. So x does not equal minus 2, otherwise it's a, x is an element of real values. Okay, so that's the end of that question. It's quite a nice question. Right, so now we're going to carry on with graphs. It says we're given f of x equals 2x squared minus 10x plus 20, minus 28. Okay, so the first thing when I do is when I look at this is I try and work out what type of graphs they are. So do you agree this is an x squared or x in the numbers? I know that that's a parabola. Okay, this is g of x is equal to mx plus k. That's a straight line. Okay. Now it says write down the y-intercept of f. Well, that's pretty easy. That's going to be minus 28. It's always a constant. Now it says determine the x-intercept of f. So what do we need to do? The x-intercept of f, obviously, what we need to do is we need to factorize this. Okay, so f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 10x 
minus 28. Now we need to factorize it. So we're going to let it equal 0. We're going to divide everything by 2. So we get x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. Then we are going to factorize it. So the factors of x are just x and x. The factors of 14 are going to be 7 and 2 and 14 and 1. The bigger number has to be the negative, but they have to be different and they have to add up to minus 5. So it's going to be minus 7 plus 2. So it's going to be x minus 7, x plus 2. Therefore, x is going to equal to 2 or, sorry, minus 2 or positive 7. Okay, nice and easy, right? Now to determine the coordinates of the turning point of f. Okay, so if you recall the x value of the turning point is minus b over 2a, which in this case is going to be minus minus 10 all over 2 times by 2. Minus times a minus is a plus, so it becomes 10 over 4. If we divide both of these by 2, we get 5 over 2, which equals 2.5. So the x value of the turning point of the roller is 2.5. How are we going to find the y value? Do you agree that we can substitute this x value into this to get the y value? So we're going to go 2 times 2.5 all squared minus 10 times 2.5 minus 28 is equal to the y value. Okay, so that becomes 2, this is 5 over 2, squared minus 10 times 5 over 2, minus 28. So that becomes 2, 25 over 4, minus, this cancel that to give you a 5, 5 times 5 is 25, minus 28. This cancels with this to give you 2. 2 goes into 25 12 and a half times. So it's 12 and a half minus 5 and 8 is 13, carry 1, and 2 and 2 is 4, 53. So, and just to make sure we know what we're doing, we're going to go 12.5 minus 53 equals minus 40 and a half, minus 40 and a half. So therefore the turning point of this thing is going to be two and a half minus 40 and a half. Okay, now it says sketch the graph. It's a second. There we go. It says sketch the graph of f, clearly showing the intercepts of both axes as well as the coordinates of the turning points. Okay, so let's just remove all this writing so that we can sketch the graph over here on the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay. So let's do it. Okay, so we know that it's turning, it's basically cutting the x-axis at minus 2 or 7. So x is minus 2 and y is at 7. The y-intercept is at minus 28. And okay, so it does something like that. This here is at minus 2, and that is at 7. This point here is minus 28. And this point is 2.5 minus 40.5. Okay, so it's more or less looks like that. Okay, so we've done that. Now it says determine the coordinates of P, a point on F where the gradient of the tangent to F at P is equal to 6. So they're saying that there's some point here, some random point which when it has a tangent to it, it's going to have a gradient, m is going to equal 6. And they want to know what that point is. 
Okay, so do you agree that the gradient of tangent, we need to actually find if dashed of x. So if dashed of x is going to be 4x minus 10. Now they're saying, what do they want? Determine the coordinates of P, a point on F where the gradient is 6. So this is going to equal 6. So therefore we've got 4x is equal to, when we take the circumference, it becomes a plus, so it's 16. So x equals 4. Right, so at x equals 4, the gradient is going to equal 6. But now we need to find the y value. So we substitute back into the original. So we go y is equal to 2 times 4 squared minus 10 times 4 minus 28, which becomes 2 times 16 minus 40 minus 28. 2 times 16 is 32 minus 68 which becomes what? Okay, 2 times what? Well, 8 from 2 is 16. And then 2 times 6 minus. That's 46. Can't be 46, it has to be 36. Sorry. Um, 36. Blue. Minus 36. Okay, so that point there is going to be 4 minus 36. It's actually more like point there. But anyway, so there we go. Now it says, now it says, determine the equation of G, a straight line passing through the points minus 2 naught and 4 minus 36. Okay, so now we want a straight line passing through these two points. So we want a straight line passing through those two points. Okay. So we can do that. That's very easy. We've got y equals mx plus c is our equation. Um, do you agree we can get the gradient of this by using those two points? We can go m and we can call this point 2 and this point 1. Then we can say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that should be minus, that would be 0 minus minus 36 over minus 2 minus 4, which becomes 36 over negative 6, which is going to be minus 6, which we expected because it's a negative gradient. So therefore we've got y is equal to negative 6 x plus c. And now we need to find where it cuts the y-axis. So do you agree we can substitute either of these two points? I'm going to substitute this point in because it's much easier. I'm going to go 0 is equal to minus 6 times minus 2 plus c. So that becomes 12. So c is equal to minus 12. Therefore, my equation is going to be y is equal to minus 6x plus 12, minus 12. Excellent, now it says, last question. Write down the equation of h in the form of h of x is equal to a x plus p squared plus q if h of x is equal to f of x plus 2 minus 3. Okay, so you know what? We actually don't need any of this writing to be able to do this. Um, so let's just erase it all. So I've got space. Okay, isn't that nice? Okay, they're saying write h of x in that form if h of x is all this. So let's first do this bit and then we'll worry about writing it in that form. Okay, so h of x is equal to f of x plus 2 minus 3. So first of all, what does that mean? That means wherever we see an x here, we need now need to write x plus 2. So it's going to be equal to 2 x plus 2 all squared minus 10 times x plus 2 minus 28. Okay, so it's and then minus 3 because of that. So let's now multiply this out. It becomes 2 x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 10x, minus 20, minus 28, minus 3, which becomes 2x squared 
plus 8x plus 8 minus 10x minus 48 minus 3. Okay, which then becomes 2x squared plus 8x minus 10x is minus 2x plus 8 minus 48 is going to be minus 40 minus 3 is minus 43. Okay, now we've got that, we now need to put it into this format. So the first thing that we're going to do is take out a common factor from these two. So it becomes 2 and we're left with x squared minus x, okay, minus 43, okay. Now we need to complete the square. So it becomes 2 times x squared minus x plus 1. Okay. Then what are we doing? How am I getting that? Um, because we have this. Oh, sorry. We have it and we square. It's not plus 1 at all. So what do we do? We add, we have and square the middle term. So... There we go. So we halve it and square it. So half of one is a half, and then we square it, so it becomes a quarter, so it becomes plus a quarter, minus 43, and then obviously we need to get rid of this, but please remember it's multiplied by the two, so now we need to minus two times a quarter. I'm just writing it out slowly so you can see what we did. So it becomes two, right? Take down the first one is x, take down the sign, which is a minus, take down the, this, and we have to do the square root of that, which is a half, minus 43 and minus two, quarter, two and a quarter, no, it's two times four, which is going to be a half. So it becomes minus 43 and a half. Right. And there you go, you know, squared. You now have it in the form that you wanted it in. H of x is equal to two times by x minus a half squared minus 43 and a half. There we go. And by the way, this is called the turning point formula. Right. Now, next question. We are given f of x is equal to minus 5x squared. The first thing they do is ask us to prove it. I mean, determine the first principles, okay? So this is actually one of the easier ones when it comes to first principles, but we're still going to do it slowly. f dashed of x equals the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, okay? That is the formula that you're going to be using when they ask you to determine f dashed of x from first principles, okay? So the first thing I would say to you is we already have f of x is equal to minus 5x squared. I would work out f of x plus h. So f of x plus h is going to be minus 5x plus h all squared, which is minus 5 x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, which is minus 5 squared minus 10xh minus 5h squared. Okay, so that is f of x plus h. Now we're going to fill in all the bits into this equation. So we're going to go f dashed of x equals the limit as h tends to 0 of First, it's fx plus h, so it becomes minus 5x squared minus 10xh minus 5h squared minus f of x, which is minus 5x squared, all over h. Okay, so now it's neat and up. It becomes the limit as h tends to 0 of minus 5x squared minus 10xh minus 5h squared and a minus times a minus is a plus becomes plus 5x squared all over h. So do you agree these cancel because it's minus and plus are the same thing? So we're left with something where we have h the common factor. And we don't just have h as a common factor, we also have minus 5. So I'm going to say the limit as h tends to 0 of minus 5. And what are we left with? Minus 10 to minus is a plus. 5 goes into 10 twice. 
Okay, oh, and we have an H that's common as well, so that just leaves you with X. Minus times a minus is a plus. 5 goes into 5 once. H goes into H squared leaves you with an H all over H. So this cancels with this, right? Then what do we have? What can we do? We can now say, well, if that's the case, we're going to assume that H can tend to 0. So therefore, we end up with minus 5 times by 2x plus 0, which equals minus 10x. So therefore, the derivative of this thing is minus 10x, minus 10x. Okay, which you should have been able to work out anywhere from the formula. Okay, nice question. Now it says, given the following, y is equal to a x, y is equal to eight x cubed, a y is equal to y to two thirds, y to two thirds. It says firstly determine dy by dx. Well, that's actually really easy. That's just that one. So we can say y is equal to eight x cubed. Therefore, dy by dx is going to be eight multiplied by three x squared. Okay, it's pretty easy. So therefore that becomes eight times three is just 24 x squared. Very easy question. Now they want dA by dy. So that's a little bit more complicated, dA by dy. They're telling us that the square root of A is equal to y to two over three. We cannot factor, I mean differentiate this at the moment because of the fact that A has a square root on it. So what we need to do is change it into an A by squaring both sides. So if we square that both sides with a is equal to, and then yet y is going to be 4 over 3. Okay. And now we need to factorize. So we'll differentiate dA by dy is going to equal to 4 over 3 y to the 3 over 2. Hmm. Nice question. Right. Now they want dA by dx. Hmm, that's a very nice question because what they're saying is that we know that A, you've worked out that A is equal to Y to the 4 over 3, right? But now what we're saying is we know that for every Y, it actually is 8X cubed. So this is equal to 8X cubed all to the power of 4 over 3. Hmm, okay. So we're still just working out A at the moment. So now what we can do is multiply across the brackets as we do, and we're left with 8x to the 4. Now it's very easy to do dA by dx. So we can go dA by dx is equal to, um, and then it's really easy, it's going to be 8 times by 4x to the 3, 8 fours are 32 x cubed. There we go. So now we've determined those three there. Let's have a look at the final question on this page. It says the straight line g of x is equal to minus 8x plus 3 is a tangent to this curve at f, tangent to curve f at x equals 5. Calculate f of 5 and f dashed of x, f dashed of 5. It says the straight line g of x is, equal, is a tangent to the curve of a function, of function f, so f of x, okay, at 5. It says calculate f of 5 minus f dashed of 5. Okay. So do you agree that f of 5... Okay, f of 5, it's just going to be minus 5 times by 5 squared, which is minus 5 times by 25, which equals minus 125. That's easy. f dash to 5 is going to equal what? It's going to equal minus 8. Do you see that? Because if you, this is the gradient at 5 is going to be the gradient, I mean the value of f dashed at 5 is going to be the gradient of this equation, which is minus 8. So f dashed of 5 is minus 8. So therefore, we want minus 125 minus minus 8, which is minus 125 
plus 8, which is going to be what? It's going to be minus 1, 25 minus 8, okay, is going to be 17, so it's minus 117. There you go. Right, that's quite a nice question. I like that one. Okay, right, so now we've got a sketch of a graph. Okay, and you can see that it has got two humps, so therefore it's going to be a cubic graph. And if we look, it does say f of x is equal to, where's my pen? There it is, minus x cubed plus 10x squared minus 17x plus d. Okay, they haven't told us where that is. It's x, x intercepts the graph are minus 1, 0, 4, 0, and 7, 0. Okay, and a and b are the turning points, and y, d is the y-intercept. Okay, it says write down the value of d. How can I just write down the value of d? I don't know what it is. It says the x intercepts of f are minus 1, 0, 4, 0, and 7, 0. And a and b are the turning points, and d is the intercept sketch and I'll write down the value of d. Oh, well, d is going to be where the x value is 0. I can't just write it down. I actually have to work it out. I can't see how I can just write it down. We haven't been given it. It says the sketch below shows the graph of f of x equals minus x cubed um, plus 10x squared minus 17x plus d. The x intercepts are minus 1, 0, 4, 0, and 7, 0. A and B are the turning points of f and d is the inter y intercept to sketch the graph. It says write down the value of d. Okay, I don't know what they expect me to do by just writing it down. The only thing I can do is work it out. I can't just write it down. So let's try this. Okay, we know that these values should be a x plus 1, x minus 4, x minus 7. That should give us this formula here. Do you agree? So if I multiply this out, I get a um, x plus 1, let's leave it like that, and this becomes x squared, then it becomes minus 4x, minus 7x is minus 11x, and then it becomes plus 28. And now we need to multiply this out, so we've got a, and then x times x squared is x cubed, x times minus 11x is minus 11x squared. Um, x times 28 is plus 28x. This times this is plus 1x squared. Okay, that works. Then this times this gives you, where was that, minus 11x. And that times that gives you plus 28. Eight. Okay, so we end up with a x cubed minus 10x squared, okay, plus 28x minus 11x is plus um, 17x, and then we just have plus 28. Therefore, a has to equal minus 1 for the simple reason that we get the same answer. So we get minus x cubed plus 10x squared, 10, minus 17x, minus 28. So therefore, d is equal to minus 28. And I'm really not sure how they expected us to do that other than by calculating it. Write down the value of d usually just means you write it out from looking. The fact that they should have said calculate the value of d. Now it says determine the coordinates of a and b. Okay, so a and b are our turning points, which means that the first derivative, f dash of x, is going to be equal to zero at the x values of a and b. 
Okay, do we agree? So what we're going to do is we're going to find the first derivative of this equation. Remember, this is minus 28. So we're going to go f dashed of x is equal to minus 3x squared plus 20x minus 17. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let this equal naught and solve for x, okay? So if we do that, we have to factorize. The factors of 3 are going to be 3 and 1. The factors of 17 are going to be 17 and 1. And to make this easier for myself, I'm going to change it to 3x squared minus 20x plus 17 equals 0. Okay. So therefore, I want this to be a negative. Okay, so both the signs are the same and they're both negative. So it's, that's what it looks like. So it's 3x minus 17, x minus 1. So therefore, x is going to equal to 17 over 3, or x is going to equal 1. So that is 1 something. 17 over 3 is 5 and 2 thirds. 5 and 2 thirds. Now we need to find the y values, the y values. So what are we going to do? We're going to substitute these x values back into the original equation and find the y values, okay? So let us do that. So let's just erase some stuff. I'm going to make some space to write. Okay. So we're going to go f of 1 is going to be minus 1 cubed plus 10 times 1 squared minus 17 times 1 minus 28, which is minus 1 plus 10 minus 17 minus 28, which is equal to what? Um, it is 10 minus 18 minus 28, I'm doing this slowly, so it becomes 8 and 8 is 16 and 2 and 1 is 3 to 46, it's 10 minus 46, which is minus 36. So this value there is minus 36. Now we need to substitute the other point in which is 5 and 2 thirds, and I have to admit that I'm going to use my calculator. So let me just get it out, and it's going to be Clear. It's going to be minus 5 and 2 thirds can be written as 17 over 3, am I right? So it's going to be bracket 17 over 3 bracket to the power of 3. Okay. Plus, no, let's go back again, delete plus 10 multiplied by 17. Uh, let's just do it again, shall we? 17 over 3, close bracket, squared, minus 17 multiplied by 17 over 3 minus 28, not delete, 28 equals 400 over 27, which is going to be 14.81. Um, so what did we say it was? Sorry, 18.14.81. Okay, 14. We don't really like that like that, do we? So let's go back to the fraction and it's 400 over 27. 400 over 27. Okay, now it says determine the value of x where the concavity of f changes. Okay, what you need to understand about that is the value of where the concavity changes is basically your point of inflection. This is your point of inflection.
inflection. So how do you get a point of inflection? You find the second derivative. So we have to find f double dash of x and let it equal naught and solve for x. Okay, grade 12, so just so that you know, um, that's the end of today's lesson. For next week, for the holidays, what we're going to be doing is we're doing a different program, slightly different program. We're going to be doing grade 11 um, maths and science in the mornings. Um, so if you check on Facebook or on the Turnable platform, you'll be able to see what we're going to be doing and what work we're going to be doing. You're welcome to join us for that. And then after the week's holiday, we'll carry on by with revision of the grade 12 material um, in the afternoons. Right, have a great evening, great and a week, great weekend, great 12s. Cheers.